Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hero Movie Podcast, your greatest source for superhero movie discussion in the multiverse. I am your host, Adam Portress, and I'm joined by Sean Keenan. Heidi thinks that that Constantine guy looks an awful lot like Stink from the 80s. <laughs> now, Bruce Leslie is out for this week, but fear thee not, everybody. Sean and I, we've got the helm here, and we we even we even coaxed him into giving us his grade and, of course, a comic book connection. Because uh, as, as well as you and I might try to do something on that comic book connection front, I just don't know that... Uh, I, I don't know that we might have that chops. Not like not like the Leslie would, no sir. I don't know semi pro history. <laughs> so you have to you, you have to take them where you can, but we've got one edited by the man himself, and of course Sean's gonna do an impression of Bruce when he does that. So uh, I hope you've been working. I, I on you know, I tried that once before and it didn't work. Like, no, I, it's I, I a tough have, one. I don't have Bruce's voice down. You have to have it's more of an overall mannerism. You could mime a Bruce Leslie, but I don't know sure. that you could, you know, do the voice. That might be his it. his cadence is very strange. Like his 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 speaking cadence, it, it, it's sort of walkin'y, you know, without the hilarious walkin' voice. Like it, it, where <laughs> <I'm> not funny <laughs> where he kind of he kind of fly uh, he kind of flies through uh, pu- any punctuation sometimes, you know, like. <laughs> Like Walken does, but and then he'll just stop, and then he'll go again, and, and I don't, I, 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 don't have it nailed. I, I could listen to him for hours on end, though, uh, and I have before with his uh, terrific podcast, Heroes and Villains. Check that out on iTunes. Look at him go. <laughs> That's how I do it. That's how I do it. Uh, but yes, uh, we, we, we wish Bruce the best. Nothing bad's happening, everybody. Just spend a little time with the family. It's Mother's Day weekend, and we uh, like all you bad mothers out there. <laughs> uh, see, that's a Boom! that's kind of a weird joke to make on this show. But anyways. <laughs> everybody watch out, because there's comedy coming through. Uh, but yes, uh, so good luck to Bruce, but uh, well, you know, we, we don't need him. We're, we're fine. <laughs> We desperately do, but we're going to soldier on anyway because that's what we're Right. Doing. This is more of a dad's not home, and, the, you know, we're going to just do what we feel like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to go off on so many tangents. <laughs> be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> See, there'll be none of that. I'll just be like, yeah, get him. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what people come to hear, I think. Uh, but we, uh, so this week is a week like we have in most months. Is when we say, "Hey, people that uh, you know help us out over at Patreon.com/hmp, we would like you uh, to tell us what you want us to watch, man. We give you several choices. You choose, and this week, oh boy, have you guys chosen some crazy here? Uh, so the ones that were up for um, debate were Batman Ninja, Constantine, All Star Superman, and Surrogates, and with a commanding 59 percent. Constantine on the CW one. Holy smokes! Did you think it was going to be that kind of a landslide? I didn't. Although you know, I know Bruce keeps pushing for surrogates, and uh, I, I remember disliking that movie immensely. And I, I guarantee you, it's going to be on the docket again. Mm-hmm. Don't let that. Don't let that uh, ruin your your voting, <laughs> uh, HMPers. Please, please keep in mind that there's a reason the. the there's a reason why I don't like that movie. And I don't think because it's awful. I think because it's just poorly done. And that means that there isn't a whole ton to talk about with that movie, if I'm correct. Or if you'd like a movie for us to watch and Adam counts how many times Bruce Willis sits throughout the movie, that might be the one you want to vote for. Because I'm not sure where that falls on his sitting timeline. But we got to find it's out. It's pretty close. It's pretty close to the beginning of that, though, because he's he, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, it's post Unbreakable. Mm-hmm. Yes, very. But it's pre G.I. Joe. Yeah, G.I. Joe, he's definitely in it. Yeah, because de- yeah. I mean, for heaven's sakes, he sits in the back of an El Camino and shoots people up. That clearly yeah. shows you the man doesn't want to stand. Man, I, I, I don't know what I had what Duke looked like in my head, but he certainly wasn't sitting in an El Camino. <laughs> you all thought you had an idea, and then they just go and uh, G.I. Joe ruined my childhood. That's uh, terrible. <laughs> that's how people think sometimes. Uh, so, yeah, people, uh, 
people were torn between like Constantine and surrogate says Brian. Uh, Rob says Constantine all the way. Really enjoy the TV show. Glad to see it's an option. I was totally thinking of suggesting it. Rocket Face himself says, I agree with Rob. Constantine TV show was one of my favorites. Is actually what gave me the hunger for comic book media, which led me to Preacher and thusly you gentlemen. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's awesome, Rocket Face. But I need, I, 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 I need you to keep this in mind. Even though I am going to hammer home uh, a certain point with Constantine tonight. That does not mean that you are wrong in your love of Constantine. Um, but there is there is a certain point I'm going to make that may ruin the show for you, but maybe not. Hmm. We'll see. I, I got some interest. I got I, I'm all over the place with my stuff. So I think I think we're I think we're in for a good discussion. Uh, but, you know, but the Patreon people said Constantine is where they want to go. And Constantine, we shall. So we're watching the first two episodes of Constantine this week. Thanks to you guys that vote. Now, if you want to vote for the movie that we'll watch next month, head on over to patreon.com slash HMP and become one of the HMPers today. And as a matter of fact, Sean, just the last second here, just before we started recording, the great Anthony King has joined up at the $5 level. Anthony King, thank you very much. From this point forward, your nickname is Unsweet Tea. Unsweet Tea. I love it. I will, and, you, and here's the thing, as I'm sure that Anthony will probably have figured out at this point, having listened to the show for a while, unless he was one of those real weird people that just goes, I've never heard of this, here's $5. Chances are he's probably listened to the show. You know that uh, th- this nickname thing's a big deal. A lot of these, some of these people haven't even been nicknamed, and we will start nicknaming some of them come awful soon in this show. And if you would like a fancy, fancy nickname, patreon.com slash HMP. Okay, Sean, what do you? Yeah. Uh, the the uh, they have they voted and they've said I don't want to say unanimously because but it was almost unanimously it seemed uh, that they wanted Constantine from the CW, uh, which by the way got canceled. So uh, I think we might could eventually do the whole series. What do you think? But no, no, no I don't <laughs> think you would actually. All right, so uh, I don't know what this trailer is about, but let's see if it works for you. Here is the trailer for Constantine. Very good. My name is John Constantine. I'll drive your demons away. We're all powerless against demons. But our world's beyond ours. You damned a girl to hell. Along with it, your soul. I found it on my door. What is it? The Eye of Horus. Egyptian symbol of protection. I'm a nobody. I hate to burst your bubble up, but you're not a nobody. What is happening to me? You're waking up, seeing the world for what it really is. Look around. No! What are you doing? There's a train coming! Stay back! I'm pointing that the wrong way. Nana. You're a threat to whatever darkness is rising. And now that you can see these things, they can see you. It's heating up down here. All right, everybody, that was the trailer for Constantine. Uh, This is the first season and only season, and uh, we're going to be reviewing the first two episodes. Here's the IMDb plot line. As we know, IMDb always 100% correct in everything they say and or do. A man struggling with his faith who is haunted by by the sins of his past suddenly thrust into a role of uh, defending humanity from the gathering forces of darkness. This is starring Matt Ryan, uh, Harold Paraview, Paranew? Sure. Charles Hel- Hel- Halford, I can't talk today, and Angelica Celia. Uh, Bruce is not here, but let's go ahead. What do you say we, uh, hold on. Uh, we're going to play it anyways because he did write it. It's time for Bruce's comic book connection. All right, Sean. Do your best, Bruce. Fans of Constantine and Constantine alike need to be well-versed in the Newcastle incident to understand that you have to understand that Johnny used to be rotten. What I mean by that is he went to a Sex Pistols concert and decided to start his own band, a saucy little number called Mucus Membrane. 
On tour with Mucus Membrane at the Casanova Club in Newcastle, he found the aftermath of a magical orgy gone horribly wrong. An abused child, Astra Logue, had conjured a hideous monster that took revenge on her father, the club's debauched owner, and the other adults who were tormenting her. The problem is, the monster refused to leave once he'd done his dirty deeds done dirt cheap. Yeah, I know ACDC isn't punk, but I've got to work with the meager tools I have available. Trying to be a hero, maybe holding out for a hero counts as punk rock? John convinced some members of the band, along with several cultist friends, to try destroying the creature by summoning a demon of their own. For those of you less experienced demonic conjurers, this is never a good idea. This is like trying to get a spider out of your house by unleashing a basket of spider-eating cobras in your house. You see, this plan has two flaws. One, I'm pretty sure spider-eating cobras are not a good thing. And two, now you have a cobra infestation to deal with. Next thing you know, you're on eBay trying to buy a mongoose. And bada-bing, bada-boom, you're the wizard. But back to John Constantine. Mucus Membrane, the little girl and a demon. How's that for a movie title? Johnny Boy conjures up a demon, and unfortunately, this demon was not under his control. After it destroyed the child's monster, it tormented Constantine's friends and proceeded to take the child to hell, a place that is only slightly hotter than Disney World in August. <laughs> take that, Disney World! The flaw in Constantine, I mean Constantine's plan, was John had summoned the demon by one of its names, but not its true name, Nergal which would have been required to bind and control the demon. Nergal would go on to be a regular antagonist throughout the series. John suffered a nervous breakdown after this incident and was committed to the Ravenscar Psychiatric Hospital, which he drifted in and out of over the years. This series deserves some major comic book crew for opening in that same hospital. That guilt of Astra hung over him for many years until in his mid-40s, he used some magic and Karn artistry to free not only her, but also the souls of all the other children trapped in hell. If this show had been picked up for a second season, maybe that could have happened on the old boob tube as well. As for the rest of the Newcastle crew, the incident left the group both physically and psychologically scarred. Fortunately for John, after helping Dream retrieve his sands, Dream in turn relieves Constantine of the nightmares that had plagued him since the incident. This goes to show that there are very few problems a good Neil Gaiman story can't fix. Well, this uh, this sucker came out. Uh, it was 13 episodes. Uh, t- well, one TV season, 2014 uh, to 2015. And uh, the pilot episode was actually directed by Neil Marshall, of all people. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, uh, he did like Dog Soldiers, uh, uh, The Descent, uh, uh, Doomsday. I think he did some Game of Thrones and stuff. And uh, he's on, he's Lost in Space, the new Lost in Space. He's on, he's a director and executive producer on stuff like that too. So that's a good show. I I need to get back to it. Yeah, I, I got two episodes in. I dug it. So uh, yeah, that's lo- good. looking forward to some more of it. Uh, now this one, the, the first episode here, we gotta, we gotta, I gotta ask you, uh, wh- which which parts do you think were uh, David Goyer? Because uh, <laughs> David Goyer co-wrote half this thing, and it's just like it feels like anything and everything in the DC universe. David Goyer's over the corner, going, "Hey man, let me get my stank on that." <laughs> and they go, "Oh, uh, that sounds like a great idea, Dave." It's just like, who does Dave know? I, well, he's he. You know, when you are one of the co-writers of the Dark Knight, you get to do whatever you want. Yeah, it's it's sadly this will be a this will be a great pass for him for t- way too long. Yeah, and what's going to end up happening is that he's going to bungle something so hardcore that they that they will not keep giving him stuff, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, Krypton is the key for that. <laughs> well, there's that, and uh, I'm just, I'm glad he's not doing like Watchmen or something like that. That's what I was afraid of. No, I, and I'm surprised by that because DC loves themselves some Goyer, man. They right. would throw him into anything. I'd be like, oh, what if it's Doctor Manhattan, but he's green? And it's like, why does that? Why does this make sense? Why? Why would you do this? <laughs> it's you know, I'm Goyer. All I do is take names and then just make them something completely different. By the way, uh, Azamandius is actually a 90 year old woman who runs a delicatessen. It doesn't make any sense, but I'm David Goyer. I do what I want. I do what I want. So uh, uh, let's speak in generalities first. Okay. 
so one of the things that it makes Constantine one of my favorite characters. And, and when I say that, I mean the Constantine from the 80s and 90s. Um, yes, because it, I, I wanted to preface this real quick, cause just, just for fans that may never have listened to any of our Constantine stuff uh, previously in the show. Uh, uh, I grew up no, no Constantine wasn't was never really on the radar. I think I may have seen a picture or two or something in Wizard as we all did in the day, uh, but I was never a reader. You you very much avid reader. Oh, very much so. I loved Constantine growing up. Uh, he, it, as a matter of fact, I was such a I was such a, a a big time Constantine reader that when I heard that my the guy who wrote my favorite story arc, Garth Ennis was moving it over to his own book for once called Preacher. Mm-hmm. I was very, very excited by that mm-hmm. uh, because he had written two storylines. Garth Ennis wrote two storylines that wh- one of the storylines is kind of bungled up with Constantine, the movie with Keanu Reeves. And the other one is this uh, very small story uh, about bugs. And it's just great. It's mm-hmm. great. Anyway. So, you know, one of the things that makes Constantine so great, especially if you are a brooding 13-year-old kid that, you know, has a penchant for art and, you know, and is a creative in any way, you realize that Constantine kind is kind of this weird oddball character because he fits within the DC universe. He's friends with uh, Swamp Thing, but, you know, like he's met up with Batman at some point in the 80s, like... But he is a very, very weird character. And he's much weirder than Doctor Strange because he doesn't have a crazy costume like Doctor Strange does. He doesn't wear a cape. I mean, he literally is wearing what he wears in the show with the tie and the and, and the, the, you know, the button-down white shirt. I mean, that's what he does with the trench coat. Yeah. That's his costume. And especially this it's, show, too, really, like, outside of, like, from the, um, you know, the Keanu Reeves movie, which we did review on this show, uh, it, it is, like, Straight out of the book, there you go. We've literally translated it. You cannot complain about this. Right. Well, it, it, right. The The character of Constantine himself is very well done on this show. You know, they have the right guy. He looks like Constantine looks in the comics. He speaks the same way. There's a couple of issues, which we'll get to in a little bit here. But one of... I, I, have, I have three major issues with this TV show. Okay. One is that... The character of Constantine is a terrible, terrible human being in the <laughs> comics. He is he is awful. Uh, he you know he has this thing where everyone around him dies uh, because it's just the way that his magic works. Where eventually the people around him will run out of luck and they die, and it happens over and over and over again in the book. It's what makes him be by himself a lot. Is that he just is tired of people dying. And they visit him from time to time when when they're dead. So, you know, he's a very selfish character. Meanwhile, he also, you know, he gets to a point where he's even homeless in in the comics for a long period of time, too. It's not a little period. It's like two, three years of 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 story arc of comics where he is he's he's homeless. I mean, he's straight up outdoorsman. Yes. Yes. An urban outdoorsman. And he, you know, he has a drug problem. He he literally snorted Santa Claus bones in one issue. <laughs> like that is that is that is a character with problems and is problematic. And and they kind of do half measure to that on this series. And and don't get me wrong, I understand why they do that because the character is so unlikable, but you like him anyway in the comic book. That's very hard to pull off on a TV show or a movie if you don't have Bill Murray or you don't have Michael Keaton. So they, there's a there's an issue with the character itself where it's it's half measures, and that and I have a problem with that because you know everyone keeps saying what a great guy he is in the show. The two episodes that we saw, I I, I counted three times where people were like you know you are really nice. <laughs> it's like no no he is not. He's a terrible person. The, the, you know, the, in the in the second episode where the the, the 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 widow of the miner of the guy working in the mines mm-hmm. hits on him. In the comic book, he isn't walking away from that situation. <laughs> like he he's going to feel bad about it, but he he will take full advantage of that situation. Hmm. 
And so it's it's one of the things that that's very bothersome to me about the character on this show. And you could have like it's, written around that too, to where it was just like ah, it's something I want to do, and blah blah blah, you know, and like just kind of you can you could do it without doing it. So well, you, you you absolutely could, but it's very it, again, it's very problematic for a TV show yeah. because because when you're reading a book or a comic book, you're not watching everything through the character's eyes a lot of the time, especially in Constantine. You, uh, he does narrate a lot of it, but you know, you're not specifically seeing story arcs through his eyes. You do sometimes, but not all the time. Because yeah, and, so you go off in, in in other you learn about other things when he's not right. there. Right. And that can't happen on this TV series. Like you have to see the world through his eyes. So that's what that's one of the things that's problematic that's a half measure. The other half measure problematic is that he is in America all the time. Yeah. He's never not in America on this show. That is a problem because this character is very specifically British. And one of the neat things about the book is that you get to learn about about Britain. You get to learn about Europe a bit. That as a kid who was, you know, not going to travel anywhere as a 13-year-old, it was a really cool thing to, to, to see. Like, oh, so that's what that looks like. That's what a suburban neighborhood in you know, out just outside of London looks like it. Like right. it was a really cool, it's a really cool entry entryway into a much bigger world. And exactly so that's, that's how I felt half. with Harry Potter. Sorry, <laughs> Say what? Exactly how I felt with Harry Potter. I'm just like, I get this so much now. All, <laughs> all of you people. <laughs> and so, you know, you, you have there, the, it's problematic that he's just here. You know, yeah. because he's always going to be the odd man out because he speaks with a British accent, which is fine. But and here's the thing, too, in America, I don't know what you folks that have uh, have not gone over here don't know is that this moment you open your flap here in the U.S. of A., there's going to be a million people that are like, oh, my gosh, your voice is like way different than my voice. There's yeah, so much and, like I don't care where you go. It's true. And you're going to have people who love the accent and immediately think that you're smarter than they are, mm -hmm. or you're going to have people who are immediately turned off by Pompous, that accent. Pompous, snooty, meh, meh, meh. yeah. Right. You think you're better than me. Oh, you, know, you come over here with your fancy tongue and just start talking like you know something to get that queen thing to shout of my house, young man. If you're so smart, <laughs> how many feet are in a mile? <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, you know, it's and it's it, it, it's another problem with the show. And, and don't get me wrong. There's a lot to recommend this show. Like the, the lead actor, Matt, uh, Matt Ryan, mm -hmm. who uh, I, I'm glad that he took some time off from being quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons to, <laughs> to do the show. I'm sitting there going, why do I know this name? I'm, I'm trying to place it. And that's where it is. <laughs> Matty Ice, baby. Matty Ice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he, you know, it's a. The, the, the character himself, hopefully that character, that, that actor keeps working as John Constantine. And I know that's difficult when you don't have a weekly series to go to. <laughs> I think they, like, they brought him over to the uh, to, to the Legends of Tomorrow. If I'm, They if definitely I'm did. And he would be great on that show as a permanent member. Because that's what that show needs is something not ridiculous on it. <laughs> It's one of those things, man. Uh, you know, I think when we when we first started and reviewed like the first, you know, like six episodes of that, I think it was. I think all of us were just like, "Well, this thing's probably not short for this world." And here it is. What are they coming on season four or something? Unbelievable. Yeah, it, but do you know anybody who regularly watches that show besides Bruce? I don't, like, I don't know anybody. I like, and and here's the thing. Uh, I think of all of us on the show, I was the one who was the most positive of all of it, and I still don't watch it. I don't like it. I, I, I never did. I, I thought I, 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 the Adam is a terrible character on that show. You know, the, the, the some of the actors don't want to be there. You know, it's <laughs> it's very reminiscent of that uh, Justice League sitcom that we saw from the 90s. Uh, oh, wow. Back. Wow. Fantastic. That was. <laughs> <laughs> but he's hey, he's showing up in other stuff and people are still just like, uh, look, man, there's been a lot of crazy stuff that's going on in the world of TV. So that coming back, I don't know, is like ever an impossibility. But, you know, no. No. I mean, Roseanne <laughs> just came back on the air, everybody. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, we're it's a matter of time before Auto Man comes back. Yeah, you know, like we're 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 not that far away from that. 
It's going to happen. Somebody's going to hand off the MacGyver or the MacGyver. Uh, wait, no, they already did that one. Uh, the, what's the other uh, one? Oh, shucks. There was Knight Rider that got Knight, handed off. Knight, there was Knight Rider did get handed off, didn't it? Oh, that's what I was yeah. thinking of. That got handed off. Oh, gee whiz. Yeah, that got um, handed off. The the uh, MacGyver got handed off. The the Dukes of Hazard handoff hasn't happened yet, but that, it's coming. That uh, you know, a little problematic with the hood though. They're, they're sure the roof of the car. Sure, that's no good. <laughs> sure. We gotta have a meeting on that. <laughs> Uh, like, what why don't we, we just make it the American flag? Done and done. <laughs> like, nope, not we far it, enough. We call it the General Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, honestly, that solves the problem right there. <laughs> it's like no one can say it. They're just like, well, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly the show's green lit makes billions of dollars. Just on, you know, all they had to do is put old glory up there. <laughs> instead, of, instead of setting it in the deep south, you said it in the in the in the, uh, uh, in the deep north. <laughs> so instead of going yeah, they go hey, whatever they go. <laughs> Put it over in like uh, <laughs> any of the Minnesota area. <laughs> <laughs> just put it up around them where they're just they're like they're Americans, but God bless them, they're almost Canadian. <laughs> well, Brad and TJ jumped it, uh, hopped into the General Grant, and <laughs> <laughs> got to go down to the store, <laughs> but it's cold out. <laughs> oh we're, crap! It's cold. <laughs> we're gonna have to let the car heat up for at least fifteen minutes before we go. That way, it's like a sauna when we get in. <laughs> Hollywood gold, everybody. Hollywood gold. Why? 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 Why are we working at the CW right now? <laughs> Boss American cheese is after us. <laughs> Boss Velveeta. <laughs> but, <Anyway>. but, <laughs> I here's a here's my thing with the show. Like I, I don't think it's that bad. I, I, it's not great either, and I think one of the biggest problems with that is that the show feels like it's coming from fifteen different angles. It feels like they're not quite sure of the type of show that they want to, you know, commit to paper. Part of it feels like it's like a uh, uh, like a procedural. They're just going from one thing to another. Another feels like kind of a X Filesy uh, monster of the week sort of thing, which is great. But it never really seems to catch a universal tone for everything, and it feels like had it been anywhere other than CW. It might have flourished. I mean, outside of network, obviously. I mean, like, if this was playing after Preacher, I think this thing would actually be successful. Because it's it kind of it does fall into that sort of vibe, but it needs that kind of the little the sheen that we see on AMC programs or HBO programs. There is a level, and a lot of it's just color correction time, if we're honest. Uh bit of quality to it that this show just doesn't really have. It feels like it's almost there, but not really. And I think CW may be the cause of that. What do you think? Well, I think that the show, uh, the uh, this show could be the absolute coolest show on TV. It, it you feels know, like if, it's got if the it was, ability. If it, if it was done correctly, this show could be everyone's favorite show that, that likes things that are good. The problem is, is that it's super formulaic, and I, you know, I, I don't know if I've said this already, but uh, this show is basically you name checked it earlier. It's MacGyver. This show has beat for beat the exact same thing that an old MacGyver episode would have, because MacGyver comes to town. There's a problem in town. MacGyver, through clever engineering of inventions. Uh, uh, saves the good guys, uh, brings come up into the bad guys. The day is saved. He moves on to the next town where there's another problem. Yeah, and that is that is what this show is. That's what Constantine is. Except for instead of clever inventions, it's magic. There's a problem in town. Constantine shows up. He brings like there's a there's some sort of like evil force in this in this little town. Constantine through magic saves the good guys. Brings come up into the bad guys. The day is saved. He moves on to the next town. And that's a problem, man. You know, this show could be basically X-Files, but with someone who is very, very dislikable as the lead character. And and there's something inherently cool about that. And, and, and don't get me wrong when I say dislikable. Like, this character, the character of Constantine, I love that character from the comic books, the character. And also, Matt Ryan does a great job, too. 
But the the character of of Constantine, it, he he does terrible things for the right reasons, and so he's always uh, he's always like dancing on the raggedy edge with the with with whether he's good or bad. Yeah. And he and he has he could make the choice over and over and over again whether he wants to be, you know, an, an evil person or a good person, and he chooses good every time. And that's why you like this character, is that it would be a whole lot easier if he was a bad guy. His life would be a thousand times better if he was, but he's not. He's a good guy, and that is what it, it's. There, I, I, I love those characters though that are, you know, they're they're on the side of angels, but they are a devil. You know, I, yeah. I, I and I've always liked that character, and and that's what this show is missing. It's missing that thing in the show. Yeah, it, 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 it the hardest thing is it doesn't feel like it's super defined to me, and it and it may get there over the over the course of the season. I, I don't know, but again, I almost like I like this enough for at least to me to at least give it a chance. I I, I feel like it's nice because I don't have anything else because it's done right. It's right, it's not right. like you go all of a sudden you know in Arrow season eighteen or whatever you're like hey I think I want to get caught up on this Arrow thing and then you look and there's eighteen seasons you're like oh well I'm not gonna do that at all you know you got a season right but the, <laughs> the 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 but again like the problem is is that Arrow is a Berlanti show so there's always going to be the thing where like everybody is related and everybody has superpowers and it's ridiculous but with Constantine Constantine am I right that is not a Berlanti show. I don't. Let me let me check the let me check the execs here real quick. I don't think it is because Goyer's involved, and if Goyer's involved, then Berlanti <laughs> probably isn't. Uh, let's see. Currently, <laughs> uh, 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 mm, yeah, Goyer is an executive producer, so yeah, right. no, he's not. So, uh, and that's funny. It feels like maybe they since they didn't have uh, you know had they had their uh, their golden boy on top of this, maybe it might have been a different story. Well, for sure. Uh, but then you're also going to have like his niece, who also is uh, well. You're you not know, wrong there. Is also a warlock, and then you have like his brother that you've never met before, who shows up, and he's a black guy, and he also has the the he's summoning some powers of magic. And you're like, come on, let's get, come on, Berlanti, you're killing me. He literally calls them the Constantine powers. <laughs> it's like I don't <laughs> think that that's. I right, have the guy. power of Constantine. You, you're so the, just saying it. <laughs> the, uh, you know, I, what would really have helped this show is if they treated it like there was not going to be a season two. That they wrote, they wrote a show that is that ends just huge, and it's great because that's one of the problems I have with all of the Berlanti shows is that they're always writing for the next season. Yeah, exactly. It, it, After they got the, the, that true success with the Flash, and especially Flash being a, a, a cliffhanger uh, for season one, there they really were just like, "This is how we do it. This is the this is the golden you know this is the winning recipe. We're set right. to go. All we got to do is keep keep on this same track and never give up, and then that'll uh, you know drive us straight to the bank, I guess." Right, and that, and it seems like you know without having watched the entire season for sure. But it seems like they're writing this show, hoping that there's a season two. And you got to write your show like there ain't going to be a season two. You got to write it so well that you're like, um, whatever season that is of Supernatural, where like everyone <laughs> dies at the end of the season, and you're like, wow, that was awesome. That's how you end the series right there. And then they got picked up for more seasons. And, and like, oh, we're back at it again. <laughs> yeah. When but they, that one season, and I don't know what season it is. It's like five or six. I don't know. It's it's when the, the that angel that they hang out with starts hanging around with them. Like that 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 uh, that season there. Anyway, get, getting off topic here. You know, well, not really, because Supernatural is basically <laughs> like when 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 Supernatural was was firing on all cylinders that show is doing it correctly that is what that show should look so, like i I'd never know? i've never honest god never seen I've, I've seen pictures of the stuff but i've never seen an episode of it so that's what it's kind of i mean like more or less. my kids my kids loved supernatural when they were younger like you know when they were in like you know just starting high school they <laughs> loved that show they, it was one of their favorite shows and so when it came to netflix we started watching it together and I'll be honest with you. I mean, it's you know, it's fine. It's fine. But the when it gets to season 
whatever season it is, the one I was just talking about, they, they, they really get it. Like the, everything gels. It's perfect for what that show is. That's exactly what that show needed to be. And then, and, and they, they wrote it where this is our, this is our series end. Like we are not coming back from this. Yeah. And it was perfect. And then they came back the next year. <laughs> will uh, will we be coming back? Uh, that, that dump truck uh, full of money in my yard says yes. Well, for sure, and you know, it, it's one of those shows where we would never have gotten the tick on Amazon if it weren't for that show because Ben Edlund made all his money through Supernatural. Oh, is that right? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ben Edlund leaves Supernatural in season ten, I want to say, to take over Gotham to start Gotham. Well, my goodness, I mean, you know, 10 years in any show, I mean, God bless. That's a, that's a long time. For sure. And, you know, it helps that those two boys are very, very good-looking boys on that show. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a, a, a rating <laughs> scandal. These these very attractive people. Other people want to see these attractive people on the screen. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I get it. Hey, I, I'm not into witchcraft, but I'm into good-looking people. <laughs> hey, this episode's not too bad. Uh, let's talk about, uh, the, the, the lady who plays Zed. Yeah. Now is, is that a, uh, again, I don't know. It's that, that, that comic book related in any way, shape or form. I know Bruce is there. Familiar. There is a woman who is an artist in, in that, in that, uh, in, in that series. I don't know. I don't remember her name being Zed. I don't remember if she saw into the future, but she definitely did draw Constantine a lot. Okay. Now let me ask you this: as an artistic man yourself, uh, also having known many an artistic person uh, throughout your uh, many years, um, how many people do you know that are like this, this diverse in their in their art talent? Just paint alone. It's like I got paint and I'm painting, but all of my paintings are in vastly different styles. The answer is zero. Yeah. There isn't it doesn't exist, one. right? <laughs> you know instantly, you know, my favorite artist in Charlotte is uh, this guy, uh, Dustin Harbin. And Dustin Harbin, you know when Dustin Harbin has has drawn something. Like, mm-hmm. you, there, there is no doubt who did this. This is Dusty. And it's the same with my daughter. My daughters are, you know instantly that it was done by her. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, there's, there, there's no mistake. Um, so, yeah. It's just you all over right. the place. It's like, here's some impressionistic stuff. Here's some stuff. Here's just some little simple line work. Here's a wild watercolor. It's just like, you don't have, this is not, now, especially if you're having visions. Now, if you're having visions of someone, do you go, well, what other artistic palette can I use this week? Oh, we're just doing black and white today. Tomorrow we dig into greens. And you're like, is this what we're doing? That's not how it is. obsession works. If you're getting weird messages beamed to your brain, you're not going to try to interpolate that in a different artistic way each and every time that you could sell in the street or something what a what a weirdo well i do i i I will say that you know with with the the artist that that i have spawned she uh she will do that though she will go from like oh uh you know i need paint now and then she'll start using paint and then she'll go oh you know i'm going back to color pencils and then she'll go to color pencils I thought that that's what you were talking about because when it comes to the whatever medium you're using, like they, our artists do like to change that up just to see if it changes their art. That's and the fine. The answer is it doesn't. Yeah, but at the same time, yeah, you're, you're correct in that. But the styles are not only just the material, but the the look themselves vastly different from everything. And and again, yes. if you're getting a like a specific message, you're not going to decode that and just go like. Don't we feel like pastels today? I think I think this memory, this flashback, this thing that's been implanted into my skull feels like pastels. <laughs> it's just so dumb. It's so dumb. Now let's get to the actual actress herself, who I don't yes. know what she's doing. <laughs> I have no idea. I want to like her. She's very attractive, but she, it feels like she's doing a thing, and it's just like it's not a thing that works. <laughs> well, she's playing crazy, and you never you're never supposed to play crazy. She just has this like everything is gonna. I'm gonna just talk to you like this for a while. This kind of means I'm serious, but who knows what's going on behind these eyes? It's like not a lot. I don't feel like, but you know. Yeah, you're you're never supposed to play crazy, and she's playing crazy. That's that is what's not working for you. 
Yeah, I I I, I don't care. <laughs> uh, I, I don't even really. I'm not sure what else is really kind of. Let's let me look at my notes here. I wrote a couple of things down because I knew Bruce wasn't going to be around, so I had to write uh, a couple of things. Uh, so I wrote. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh yes. So my my combina- Who's your combination of what? Uh, Matt uh, is it? Matt Ryan. Yeah, what's yeah, Matt, yeah, what's because it feels like now I feel like I'm talking about football because <laughs> I didn't put it together until now. Uh, so who do you think is kind of the 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 uh, the combination, the love child uh, uh, for for Matt Ryan? Who, oh wow, who, I, I did not uh, who put think them about together. That. He, uh, Sting and Brad Pitt. I got Colin Farrell and Willem Dafoe. Oh, that's good. Cause they got like, especially he's got like a couple of like, like when he gets that crazy smile going on, very Defoe. Uh, that is that is a good point. He is very Defoe. Uh, let's see. I, I wrote show doesn't know what it wants to be. I think we covered that. Could be good if yeah. it's stuck to one. This chick uh, is good looking, but her acting is wooden. All right, so those are my notes. <laughs> I'm, a, well, I'm what we call a real note taker. Um, <laughs> but it does it now. Uh, so let's talk about this now. Is the character of uh, is it Manny? Yeah, Manny the Angel. Is that yes. in the, that's in the program is, or in the book as well? Yeah. That is in the book. Yes. Okay. Uh, what, what do you think about this guy, uh, Harold uh, per- Perinu? I think that's how you say it. He's from Lost. That's who I know him from. Well, I know him from Oz. He was in a wheelchair. Um, he is. Uh, oh, he's made a he good is... recovery then. I'm sorry. i got to put in the Bruce jokes, too. <laughs> he, uh, he's fine. You know, that, that actor, uh, he, he's, he's a fine actor. When you need someone who you forget that they are on the show, you get that guy. Um, you know, all I think about when I look at him is, so what, what's the deal with Walt? When are we going to see Walt again? <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh, how do we just it. decide that, uh, uh, a Walt needs to go away? And the best part, spoiler alert, slight, spo- tiny spoiler alert for Lost. I know some of our listeners, you know how it is. But the yeah. fact that they just go like, like, uh, I think it was Locke who's like, I had a vision. I saw Walt, but he was older. <laughs> What do you think that means? I think it means the actor was growing up real fast, and you're like, "Oh crap, we got to get him off this show." No one thought about this. <laughs> no one was just like, "Uh oh, wait a minute, this child is about to go through puberty. He's going to shoot up another three feet, and we're going to be screwed." Uh, yeah, just film a scene with him. It's like he's two feet taller than he was a month ago. Just now he's sh- taller than his dad. <laughs> just write in that Locke goes, but he's older. I don't know. <laughs> and that'll just write it all out of the script. It's like, no, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, it won't. <laughs> and and again, they never reference it after that point again. We don't even get to see him at the very end, but you know how it is. Uh, yeah, you know, the. It, 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 I'll, I'll just tell you, to me, Straight up, the the actors on this show, it's not like watching Dexter. You know, Dexter was the only good actor on that entire show. Um, uh, Michael Hall, Hall. whatever his name is. He he was the best part of that show, and he should be. Uh, Also, Matt Ryan is the best part of Constantine. Mm -hmm. But the other people on the show aren't terrible, terrible actors. You know, I think that the, the lady who plays the artist... Uh, she she's terrible, um, but for the most part, everybody else on the show is pretty pretty good. You know. Yeah, I mean, like his his uh, his buddy there. What's his face? Uh, oh, jeez, I lost my place. Uh, yeah, I know who you mean. The big the, guy the, with the yeah, deep, the big guy, uh, uh, Charles Helford. He plays Chas Chandler. That's a tough name. Or we just call him CC around here. You know, it's a. Uh, it, all, everybody on that show is is are, are are pretty good. Like everybody on that show, there's nobody where I'm like, oh my god, get, let's get past this scene. Yeah, it's and, and yeah, and there's a couple of people like that on uh, other shows, <laughs> Flash. Uh, yes. that you're just like, please, uh, can we just skip over this bit because I'm I don't need to hear this melodramatic music yet again. We didn't have a lot of that, so uh, for that, I think we can all applaud. But you're right. That's yes, that's, sure. that's it, a no Berlanti sort of thing. Is why that happened. Yes. The the lows of Constantine are far better than the lows on a Berlanti show for sure. It's the the but the problem is when when the Berlanti shows are clicking, those shows can be have moments of greatness, 
and Constantine, there ha- there really isn't anything where I'm like, man, that's awesome. I don't know, like, one of the really cool things, I don't know where it came from or how it kind of happened or whatever, but when they're, uh, when the two of them are sitting in the car and it starts flooding up kind of like black oil and everything, they can't get the doors unlocked and the hands cut. Like, I like stuff like that. That's like, that's way out of line. It's so bizarre and weird. I think they needed, I, I think, I and mean, they may do it, I don't know. But I think that's something that they should have leaned into if they didn't. Uh, on the show because just these weird and wild, crazy, you know, outlandish sort of stuff. And it feels like, again, had you gone to like an AMC, had you gone to an HBO, you could take that stuff and just dial it to 11 and make that the thing that people really go like, oh, dude, did you see this? This was so screwed up. I can't believe the mind that came up with X, you know? Yeah, for sure. You know, X-Files had the worms under the skin Mm -hmm. where it was just so horrifying and awful. And and that's what Constantine needs more of, quite frankly, are those moments where you're like, oh, my God, that's so disgusting. Yeah, The Host. That's a great episode for people that would like, because they're like, it's like, oh, my, you just like, I don't even know if they'd show that on television today. It's so, you're right. It's so grotesque. I don't think they would show, uh, you know, maybe at least, a, you know, a 16th of what's on the X-Files that would just be chopped out because it's like, oh, we can't. <laughs> You want to show what now? <laughs> we got people with PTSD at home. <laughs> they, can't <laughs> they can't watch this. This is not gonna. This is not gonna be good for anybody. We're gonna cancel this right now. <laughs> no not seasons for you. Uh, but uh, like I said, this is what I liked about the show is that it did feel kind of X Files. It was a little bit procedural, but to me, ultimately, within at least within these first two episodes, can't say how it uh, you know traveled on later, but it just didn't have that special feeling to it you know yeah i mean it's it's what i said at the top of the show here you know it's it's half measures this show it it it, you either go all the way with it or you go the opposite direction yeah where you're making it you know what what they're trying what they're trying to do is they're trying to make macgyver with magic and and that's not great no, you need to have some some moments, and and again, we just saw the first two episodes. I don't want people writing us just going, well, in later episodes, we know that we get it, but at least as as far as this goes, it it feels like yeah, you need to feel a little bit more of the peril, a little bit more of the you know shadow above you that you have to get over you know week to week, and I think that's an interesting thing that while you can have kind of a monster of the week. Like the X Files, you also kind of need like they would have Monster of the Week and then what we call legacy episodes, right? Right. That are more right. about the big giant overarching lore of right. of the work of the X Files. Uh, right. Smoking it, Man. Yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, again, another poor thing in the fact that all through the '90s we just saw a man smoking on television whose name was literally the Cigarette Smoking Man, and today, <laughs> how dare you put a cigarette on screen? Dog on it. Well, he's back. I mean, he he shows up in the yeah in, in the new season. I guess it's Fox though. They got a Fox attitude over there, but not not any <laughs> uh, Fox attitude. <laughs> but I wish know, I had a little more Fox attitude. We all we all would like it. Uh, but at least we get to see him spinning around a lighter and like holding a cigarette every now and then. So at least it's kind of sort of. But you know, yeah, it's like one of those things. It's just so iconic that why why would you not have the thing that's you know if you see Flavor Flav at a supermarket and he doesn't have his clock on, did you really see Flavor Flav? Well, he's only there for one reason, and that's to get more clock wax. <laughs> Show me your clock wax out, please. <laughs> that was spot on. Adam. <laughs> and you had to do it with a little sway back and forth to the left and right. I don't know why. <laughs> it just felt like what's appropriate for the bit. <laughs> I know we're an audio medium, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm giving it my all, even for the audience that's not here. <laughs> That's how sad I am. But I would not be sad if I found out how this here program re- re- relates one-to-one directly. I told someone at work about this. I'm like, we got a show where we take every TV show or movie and relate it one-to-one back to Sylvester Stallone. And I have been told it cannot be done. Lies? Hmm. Because I've done it. Really? Thank you, Adam. I have a prepared statement. Hmm. Hugo Santiago was one of four art directors on the TV show Constantine, which means one of two things. Either the art directors on Constantine wanted to get off the show as quickly as humanly possible (laughs) because it was a never-ending nightmare, or 
there's only one art director, but he's a shapeshifter, and his prime personality is called Hugo Santiago. Mm-hmm. Or maybe there's a fifth dominant personality, but the Hugo Santiago personality is the most socially acceptable one, <laughs> the artsy-fartsy personality. Meanwhile, when he gets home, the prime personality takes over. He's building a kill room. He's got a homeland wall and Kurt Russell's car and death proof. <laughs> Hugo Santiago has been working in film since 1984 Oof. when he worked as assistant art director on the TV show Airwolf, <laughs> star- <laughs> starring the then hunky Jan Michael Benson <sighs> and the even hunkier Ernest Borgnine. Oh. If you're old enough that you watched the TV show Airwolf as a kid, you should definitely go watch it again because it's even better than you remember. <laughs> and it totally, totally holds up. <laughs> Hugo Santiago also worked on Simon and Simon, Jake and the Fat Man, which is a show I constantly bring up for some reason. I didn't even see that many episodes of that show. I maybe saw two episodes of Jake and the Fat Man growing up, but I bring it up all the time, and maybe it's because its name is Jake and the Fat Man. I'm going to play a what now? Oh, boy. <laughs> so, so I'm guessing I'm Jake. Uh, he knew, um, who's told him? <laughs> Sorry. But then in 1993, Hugo Santiago was the set designer on Demolition Man, which is a movie that has come up many, many times before on this podcast. At the time this movie was being made, it must have been a toss-up as to who was the crazier star on set. Because in 1993, I'm willing to bet it was probably Stallone. But that doesn't mean Wesley Snipes didn't also throw food at the caterer. (laughs) He just threw less food than Stallone. And there you have it, HMPers. Hugo Santiago is this week's Stallone connection. Now, Papa Midnight... Let's review the first two episodes of a show we'll more than likely never see again. Oh, uh, it is that time, everybody. Here on Hero Movie Podcast, we have our own Robin rating system where, uh, you know, we just take characters and make them. In- they're, let's be honest, they're there instead of stars. <laughs> But it's yes, our system. Yes, every Robin correlates to a series of stars. You see, it's not difficult. I don't know why we've waited 206 episodes to explain this. Uh, but if you'd like to see how that list breaks down, head on over to Facebook.com slash Hero Movie Podcast and uh, like that page, man. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go first since Bruce is not here. I think I like the show. Uh, we're going to be rate the two episodes. Normally wait till full season, but eh, you know, like Sean says, who knows? Uh, yeah. But <laughs> depends on how long this program <laughs> continues to be on the air. Very true. Very true. <laughs> we could be doing this five years from now. So if it's still, eh, maybe we might pick it up at some point. But as for the future, it doesn't look like it. So we're going to go ahead and give a regular rating. Uh, for me, this is Damian Wayne. It's right there in the middle. It's not too bad. I feel like... Honestly, at the end of the first episode, I was like, eh, because I remember seeing the pilot initially, and I thought the pilot was okay. I thought the second episode was a little bit better. It felt like it was a little bit more cohesive, worked a little bit, and I was like, you know what? I I could possibly be on board for this. I might at some point. I don't know when. I don't know how, but I might actually check out the other episodes if and I get some time to do so. But right now, as it stands, right in the middle, I, I hope it would get better. But you guys, Patreon.com, you guys are the ones that voted unanimously for this. Tell us in the comments, man. Sean, uh, you want to do Bruce's? Uh, yeah, Unsweet T, tell us tell us what you think of this show. <laughs> uh, you want me to do Bruce's? Yeah, read Bruce's. All right, I shall read Bruce's. I like the character and the actor better than the show. Constantine is a lot more fun now that he's on Legends of Tomorrow, and I kind of wish we watched the animated CW Constantine series instead. Damian Way. <laughs> hey, here's the thing. That's not, not ever going to happen. You and I both know that that's going to be something we'll eventually get to because that's what we do around here. We come back to everything. How long ago did we do the regular Constantine? That was a while back, right? That was that was that was years ago now. Yeah, so we'll, we'll eventually come back around to it, I'm sure. Uh, and so, pretty decent. What was it again? For him, it was a Damien. One. Damien as well. Okay, all right. Let's bring it on home to you. Sure. So I I, I just came up with an idea. Okay. Uh, you know how every Halloween we watch another episode of The Corrupt. Yes. 
What we should do is we should always have a Constantine for like something specific that no one gives a crap about, right? So like, uh, you know, Christmas, we do Christmas theme show. Uh, you know, Thanksgiving, you can't really do a Thanksgiving yeah, theme. Yeah, pretty tough. But, but so we should have like some arbitrary, like your birthday, we see a, we, we see another episode of Constantine, you know, <laughs> mm. because for my birthday is too close to summer movies because, you know, it's in July and there's always, there's always superhero stuff. Yeah, that, that month is our, has been filled on the H&P calendar for about three months now. Right. So what we do is like we make it your birthday or whatever it is that you want to do on your birthday. We should do that for uh, for H&P where not Constantine because you don't care about Constantine. Yeah, it's but not enough to take my own birthday for it. Well, exactly. And so like we, but we figure out like so where because there's there is a lot of Constantine stuff out there mm-hmm. that we you know, we could always pull it up for this one day, like flag day arbor day you know like something weird like it's arbor day everybody and that means constantine <laughs> you know like something weird yeah. like that email us your ideas everybody i want i want to hear from the hmpers on this one i want to i want to yeah. hear what they think i think they may have a good idea for where we might place constantine somewhere in the record so eventually and hey they voted for it for crying out loud tell us in the tell us where in the rotation you think it ought to go what holiday or any particular day like that best answer eh we'll we'll give it a shot i don't i can't say we promised to do it yeah, I can't promise to do it, but it, it, it's a good idea. Well, you know. But speaking of, you know what we did for my birthday? It was Ginger Dead Man. I don't know that I would have requested that at all. <laughs> well, I've got some good news. <laughs> that is that there are three more Ginger Dead movies we could see if we wanted to on your birthday. Well, I'll tell you this: the only way we're reaching them is those goals I mentioned at patreoncom slash That's true. Everybody. That's true. So That's let's true. make those happen because my goodness. It is something else. Um, Sean, that is it. Thanks for uh, being the other leg to this two-legged stool. Man, I, I'm really happy to be part of this two-legged stool with you, Adam <laughs> Portress. We do what we do around here. Now, if people wanted to find you somewhere on the Internet, where might they look? Uh, why don't you go to dogeatpod.com, where I think I have five episodes of another podcast that I was experimenting with to see what it would sound like. Uh, the first episode is a little hinky audio wise, but everything else after that is fine. Yeah. Once, uh, once it hits those. its stride and everything, it really works. Yeah, I think so too. So, uh, uh, listen to, listen to those. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at hero movie. Sean, I'm never on it, but you know, there's pictures of me on there. So if <laughs> he's you want to see waving to the like, camera going, hello, how are you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you, if, if, if you always wondered what I look like, that's, that is what I look like. Uh, and of course, Bruce's uh, show. I think he it, it, like didn't he just put out another Heroes and Villains? After I have like, not, much? I have not checked the feed yet, but I would imagine if he, he has because he said he would, and he is good like that. Yeah, I believe he did Magic. Yes, an episode on Magic just came out on Wednesday, as did yet another episode of Chubby Wizard Man. And of course, as always, check out the book that features all three of us in the most lifelike adventure. I listen. I, I'm going to tell you this, kids. I never in a million years thought my name would be in a story, in any kind of a book <laughs> sort of thing. There's no reason for it ever. It's, it's the most proud thing I am of something, and I had nothing to do with it other than being you know, partial inspiration, I suppose. But let me tell you, that's something you want in your life. Get a book written about you. <laughs> and then sign it and give it to other people for Christmas, as I did. And you know how you do that? Go over to Amazon, buy that book. Uh, it helps Bruce out, man. So buy a digital one, buy a real one. I like the real one because the real one looks good. It looks like a Hardy Boys book in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. That's what we are. We're like a really low rent, crappy superhero Hardy Boys. <laughs> we're like we're like Encyclopedia Brown. Yeah, some of that. And of course, my other show, the Film Find, Filmfind dot com. Sean, this will surprise you. I was by myself uh, this last week, and I did a show for a whole hour. Can you believe Adam talked about something for an hour? Just yeah, by I himself? totally can. But what did you actually say during that hour? Uh, three. Yeah, uh, hey, well, I discussed three whole movies. So uh, check them out. Oh, nice. Only one of them worth seeing. <laughs> uh, Which one? Uh, the, the new one from Diablo Cody and uh, Jason Reitman, Tully. 
Oh, wow. So, wow. So I, I didn't know that those two were getting back together for something. I yep. love their work. Th- third time around, man. Uh, I didn't dig the first one, but the last one was great, and this one was great as well. Oh, very um, cool. But, uh, yeah, I enjoy it. So check those out, and uh, I don't know what I'm. Uh, who's going to be on the Film Find this week. It may just be me again, but uh, Matt is getting very close to finishing up all of his crap. So, uh Thanks for holding out, everybody. But that is it. Again, we'd like to thank the people over at Patreon.com slash HMP who made this show happen with their votes. If you, too, would like to vote on what we do, check out Patreon.com slash HMP. Plus, you get the pre-show, post-show, all that kind of good stuff. So do that. That is it, everybody. Join us next week when we're talking about, uh, what's it called again, Sean? Deadpool 2. Two. Okay. All right. I think that I think people are a little bit excited about that. So until then, for the absent uh, Bruce Leslie, Sean Keenan, I'm Anna Fortress. Stay super, everybody. Goodbye, Marty and Evie. We miss you, Commodore.